Welcome to EI Cafe with Azim, in which he reflects on key aspects of life and business through the lens of emotional intelligence. You will learn how emotional intelligence can be used for your success in both personal and professional lives. The podcasts cover topics on leadership, collaboration, culture, building a positive mindset, and even raising kids. You will hear key life lessons and tips from the most prominent personalities, business leaders, entrepreneurs, EI practitioners, and executive coaches from around the world. So sit back, relax with a cup of coffee as we get into today's show, AI Cafe with Azim. Unlocking solutions in the workplace is crucial for adapting to change, fostering innovation, increasing productivity, enhancing collaboration, and of course, boosting employee engagement. It empowers individuals and teams to navigate complex challenges effectively, ensuring the organization's success in dynamic environments. A very warm welcome to the show. This is EI Cafe with Azim, Season 10, and I'm your host, Azim Sahir, a human capital specialist, a Lego serious play facilitator, a safe study for a PCC level coach, emotional intelligence, and emotional culture practitioner. I'm one of the lead facilitators at Luminary Learning Solution. In today's topic, we are going to talk unlocking solution, right? Now, I, why I put reframing of unlocking solution, we technically talk about problem solving but i want to rephrase it reframe it so people get a new perspective on it so the topic today is unlocking solution navigating complex challenges in the workplace to have this conversation i have a very good connection who is joining me to have us this discussion around it let me introduce her she helps business leaders and their teams play their to their strengths so they can stop feeling stress in times, pressure, change, and feel confident in achieving their goals. An exceptional business trainer and a coach, she combines her successful management experience in the corporate world with engaging creative methods for learning and development. An advocate for simplicity, she uses a creative method. Of course, this is where me and the guest comes on board, a Lego series play to help teams to get clear on their goals and generate solution to achieve them. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome Anath Shahabi, business performance trainer and coach. <laughs> Anath, welcome to the cafe. Thank you so much. What a lovely introduction. And I love that this tool that we're both so passionate about is not only helping us connect other people, it's also connected us from across Absolutely. the oceans. Yeah. Brick at a time, right? One brick at a time, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, Anat, uh, first and foremost, thank you very much for um, tuning in and joining, accepting my invitation and coming to share this particular topic. Um, I know the topic is huge and we have very limited time, so it's going to be a for sure an interesting one. Now, why I took this particular topic, it's, you know, I can really say this could be a problem solving conversation, but let's not talk about the problem. Let's focus on the solutions. That's my intention, right? On you know, starting the context, my first question for you is, we do understand the situation, the environment, the global economic you know, politically, geopolitically, everything we have a problem. We are in a tough situation. And this is impacting me and you as individual, as giant-like organizations as well. Now, how can organizations foster a culture of unlocking solutions to encourage their employees to navigate these sort of complex situation in the workplace? 
Yeah, it's a it's a really good question because I think, as you're rightly saying, we are in unprecedented times, and of course, in major organizations, is always the the pressure of time, the pressure of achieving uh, success. And I think, like with most most organizations, I think it always has to start at the top. It has to start with the leaders, and I think the leaders are in a wonderful place mm-hmm. to first of all show a little bit of vulnerability. So we don't have all the answers and they mm-hmm. don't and nobody is expecting them to but unfortunately a lot of the time people are a bit apprehensive about uh, admitting mm-hmm. uh, perhaps that they don't have uh, all the answers uh, showing the vulnerability i think mm-hmm. when a leader is more vulnerable then they can first of all the um, employees feel safer mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, suggesting new solutions, but also there's the possibility of looking externally to trainers, coaches, facilitators, other people, just to see how they're approaching mm. similar uh, problems. So I think it has to come from the top. And I think the culture is then more open, mm-hmm. uh, one where communication is perhaps simpler, mm. uh, where there is where there's actually active listening. So when people in your organization suggest perhaps different solutions, you're actually in a position to listen and Mm. not say, oh, we always do it this way. So Mm. a bit more collaborative working, simpler and better communication. But most of all, I think at the head of it is the Mm. vulnerability of the leader. And it's it's very interesting that you open up with leadership and the component of vulnerability. Um, you know, um, uh, just start recording for a previous um previously for an episode. I I, I got Kul Mahai. I don't know whether you are connected with him. No, right? Yeah, he is, I probably yeah. will now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we talked about vulnerability with him. I talked about vulnerability with him, and he gave an example. Uh, when the uh you know situation is tough, the CEO coming and talking about look. We are in a tough situation and I don't have solutions for this. Mm. I, 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 I don't have answer for this, but you know what? We are going to get through this. I think this is yeah. what you're trying to say to unlocking that particular solution mindset, bringing people, encouraging people to be open. As you said, the communication is so vital. Um, yeah. I think, I think you can't hide anymore. You can't fake anymore. That's what I understand. What What is your thought on that as leaders? I think, uh, yeah, I think you're you're right. I think I think that when you are trying to hide, there is a lot of energy that is being wasted. There's a mm. lot of stress for you, but also a lot of um, a lot of frustration for your mm. employees mm. as well. Mm. And I think that when you do share that honesty, listen, I don't have all the answers. Uh, I think that is that is such a relief for everyone yeah. to hear. Um, yes, it's it's worrying, but hey, we're all in this together. He doesn't yes. have the answers. Maybe it's up to us it's, it, to to come up with and, it. And right? I, I love that phrase. We are all this in together, right? That, that's yeah. that's that is so powerful. What I see is because uh, it's not me and it's just on you. It's it's we, right? So we we get into that particular context. So um, on that line, um, now here I'm going to talk about. Yes, we we do understand problem solving is. It, it's vital. It's a daily basis happening in a routine mm-hmm. basis. Uh, it's yeah. part and parcel of that. We can say another word of is firefighting. <laughs> Most of the people say is about it. But my question is, what role of the innovation plays in this unlocking solutions? And how can company can promote such mindset to embrace to pro- solve problem. I think this is where like our, our favorite toy also can come into play. You can pick a couple of things if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Do you know what, Azima? I do think that um, the the biggest role that innovation has, if we let it, is the disruption of the normal way in which we do things. Mm-hmm. And I think that you and I both know that the the one one of the disruptors that, that obviously we work with is, is Lego Serious Play. But mm-hmm. the reason it's I think we we are perhaps a bit more reticent to uh, embrace innovation mm-hmm. is because it defies logic. Yeah. 
We are very much logical creatures. We use our left brain thinking most of the time. And all of a sudden, we are introducing something completely different, mm. uh, which defies the logic. And we are being asked to basically let go of our conventional thinking yeah. and give rise to something that we don't know is unfamiliar to us. And that is, it's a double-edged sword because that is exactly why it works so well. It, it completely disrupts the way mm. that we think. And actually, most of the time, it gives our logical brain a rest. <laughs> Be more <laughs> creative. Work, yeah, it works quite, quite well. Um, so I think that's probably... Um, you know the the biggest the biggest role that that I would say um, that innovation can can have. I think once you do embrace it, then obviously it does give you. Oh my goodness! It's a breath of fresh air because mm. all of a sudden you see a different way mm. of, of doing mm. things. And once mm. you allow yourself to to perhaps even think a little bit differently, then that stretches your your mind yeah. for future interventions. Um, mm. Yeah, mm. but and it, one of the toughest part is bringing that mindset to the workplace, to the context, because we, we all know that as human beings, right? When you get into the process and you get into policies and procedures, we tend to do the same thing again and again and again. Um, that yeah. playfulness is not available. In, I'm not saying all the organizations, some of the organization, um, but then again, bringing that mindset. How to bring that mindset? For people yeah. to look, you know, we have a problem. Let's solve it. And being that creative piece, how, what do you think one thing organization can do on this? Yeah, again, a really good question. And I think the one of the reasons that we keep doing the same thing is that at the end of the day, our brain is actually quite lazy. It wants to conserve energy, right? So, you know, you look at the way that you go home, whatever way you, you choose. You know, if you're going on the bus, you will always take exactly the same route because you don't mm. have to think about it. Your brain is conserving mm. energy. So mm. actually, we are in a way uh, built to do exactly the same thing. And so I think let's not be so hard on ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I do think that Lego Serious Play aside, because obviously your listeners know that we both um, are lovers of the method and we both use it. I think there are other ways of introducing perhaps more gently elements of creativity into the workplace. I had the privilege of visiting the um, Lego headquarters. Yeah, in I saw some pictures, Lourdes. lovely with yeah. Lourdes as well. Yeah, so obviously you expect them to have Lego bricks there to foster the imagination and, and yeah. help people be creative. But the other things that they were doing is there was like a garden that people mm. could go in and uh, work in at any time. There was like a Zen meditation place that mm. people could and, and um, garden, if you like. Mm. There was a music room so people can go and play a musical instrument. There was a cinema. There are so many ways to introduce, I think, um, creativity just to give our logical brain mm. a bit of a rest and just to see something else to spark our imagination. Um, I think just introducing yeah. small things like that would be um advantageous but you're mm. asking me about what would be the one thing and i think the one thing probably in big organizations is that permission it's that yes let's create a safe space where people feel hey mm. it's okay mm. it's okay to do something a little bit different it's okay mm. maybe mm. to explore and maybe even get it wrong mm. Mm. let's have that kind of mindset yeah. because without it Mm. I think people are going to be fearful of, mm. of trying to do something different. Um, I, I think I think two aspects. Um, one I just want to add is I was reading the book um, Idea of Flow by Jeremy Atley, right? Um, you, mm. you mentioned about music. You mentioned about the meditation, the Zen room. He mentioned about having a power nap. <laughs> ah, yeah. brilliant. So he mentioned about having a power nap, um, just about seven minutes. Just just time it and just have a power nap. Once you wake up, whatever comes to your mind, just start writing it. So it's it's a technique. I'm I'm, I'm in the verge of exploring it. Whether it's, oh, it's excellent. It Are you managing to wake up after seven minutes? <laughs> so so uh, <laughs> we have to put an alarm. 
for which sure you get up. Yes, that would be because, my worry. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a person who goes to deep sleep quickly as it possible. We do, mm. I don't wait for ninety sec, ninety minute cycle. Um, this yeah. is a challenge. It, it might be different from person to person. I think it's not everybody uh, getting the same medicine. So I think the person need to understand what's what is suitable for me and to get that particular creative mindset. I think that's what it is. Number two, what you said about the having that safe space. This where um psychological safety I think comes into play. Yes, um, yes. By Amy Edmondson, it is a fantastic tool. Now, at Parent Thrive, we embrace parenthood together. Join us to navigate the joys and challenges of raising children through connecting with the community. As parents, we connect. As parents, we share. As parents, we learn and grow. Join us at Parents Drive to start your empowered journey towards parenting. Um, and you mentioned about collaboration in the in, in in the top part of our conversation now how can leaders empower the teams to effectively collaborate and share the diverse perspective now i'll give you a context to this right now yeah. uh, last weekend i was i was facilitating a session on on collaboration and um, you know being bringing that tribe component with with lego so i i asked them to pick up their own challenges build the challenge and i asked them to build solutions for it and show me the steps so in the four tables once we are done we went through all the four tables ultimately guess what everybody has the same problem mm-hmm. and they are trying to sort out the same problem but they are do- losing different different resources now two aspect for it i think using different resources different ideas is good but i think having the same problem they didn't know that they have everybody has the same problem yeah so this why yeah. i just want to bring this aspect how can effectively collaborate and how can leaders empower their people to collaborate yeah i think um you've raised a, a really good um conundrum and i think the visual of four different tables having exactly the same um problem is actually mirrored in many organizations because i, I think many organizations tend to have their employees working in silos mm. so people are not necessarily talking cross functionally to each other yeah. and it might be exactly as you say they might have exactly the same problems or they might have different problems but they're always going to be solving them exactly the same way and i remember you've reminded me now when i was managing a, a sales force i used to work for a pharmaceutical company one of my um team uh, members had this brilliant idea she said listen we all have challenges on our territories why don't we swap challenges so that i solve the problem of the other territory mm. oh my goodness it wasn't my idea it was her idea so it came it came from my staff but it's again having that uh you know safety to to bring it to me and for me to say yes of course and it was one of the best exercises mm. ever because fresh pair of eyes same role different territory but different solutions and then they swapped again so you get to adapt someone else's solution so i think that collaboration again it, it's it's about having the safety but mm. also communication cross co- communication i think there's the silos element and the other level of course is that oh and that is uh, as a trainer let's just have her in the training role imagine if you had me you know mm. inspect or try and re- resolve something else i will have a different idea mm. so i think it's it's about not sticking people in their in their um, in their kind of prescribed roles mm. but also having that safety uh, and much much uh, more increased uh, communication mm. collaboration mm. Mm. Uh, cuz there's so much honestly there's so much incredible resource in organizations but it's not efficiently being used Very i think untapped resources and tap resources exactly what it is now what one of the thing i really it's really um some of the key challenges many people have is like um you know and you know you said swapping the areas to try to see a different perspective some of the yeah. leaders are sometimes they might feeling insecure to release their stuff because they might lose them you know they might have interest because these are the key players you know sometimes 
don't you think they have such an insecure feeling into that context yeah yeah um it's a really good question i think though as managers when i was a manager i think our job is to is to nurture our people and equip them with the right tools and when the time right it's like a child you know they're mm. going to go somewhere mm. else but they're going to go with uh, with your blessing because mm. that's what you want you want the best yeah. for them yeah um i i had some brilliant people who left because there was just nothing to stretch them anymore and you kind of think yes it's it's tragic that they've gone but mm. oh my goodness they've gone on to do such amazing things mm -hmm. and mm. other people come in their place so i think yes there is that insecurity it's it's a, it's an inconvenience you have to recruit someone else but you've got to you've got to kind of understand why are they wanting to leave if it's something that you need to improve then definitely there is work to be done yeah but otherwise it's the natural cycle i think of things mm. we're long the days when people have one one job and stay in it you know <laughs> all their life <laughs> that's an interesting one <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> um yeah I, i think i think it's the values of the leader right um it's end of the day it, it's a teamwork it's a collaborative aspect i think um it, irrespective of whether we are solving other people problem at the end of the day we are solving organization problem i think that bigger picture need to be come into mind that's my thought now we we talk about you know challenges and you know solving the problem and unlocking the solution and with your experience um what sort of a specific skills does these employees need to develop to really effectively problem solve i know problem solving you can't really have certain a b c d e sort of a set of process to solve skill it's very specific and subjective and you know timely but then again with your experience what sort of a specific skills you think people need to really embrace to solve these problems Yeah, do you know, I think the easiest uh, way to explain it and I think we all have these skills is the skills that children use when they're playing because that is exactly the skills that we want to embrace. We want to embrace um the the joy the joy of whatever it is that we're doing. Um there will be joy because there is always meaning or there should be meaning to what you're doing. Mm. Uh and the joy also comes when you're perhaps a bit more playful, a bit more curious. So a very healthy dose of curiosity, having an open mind. Um again, we talked a bit about psychological safety, but when you do feel safe, then it's a lot easier to try Mm. out different things because you know there isn't a consequence to getting it wrong it's all a learning curve so i I've, it's like when you're a child and you're playing in a maze okay so you've you you've hit you've hit the wall and you can't go any further but hey it doesn't matter because you're going to run mm. back and try a different way and it's that kind of mentality that you want to uh, embrace i think the other thing that is really the other soft skill that mm. is uh, really uh, beneficial is simple communication because if people can understand what you're doing if you can see clearly what you're doing then it makes it so much easier to bring others on board mm. Mm. um i think a lot of the time things are just so complicated and nobody <laughs> understands where they're going let alone how to get there yeah um so i think that that is a skill in itself um particularly you know when we are looking at complex or or, or organization with complex uh, products uh, mm. or information mm. uh, i think those are the challenging uh, ones and those are the ones where you want to have more simple yeah. Uh, yeah. communication in you know, analysis I just picked up something really interesting you said. I I I really value the other things also but this is really kept my um you know antenna <laughs> keeping you. the Wi-Fi network keep bringing me is the playfulness. You did mention about the playfulness right. Now here's my take when we face a challenge when we get into a tough situation we get hijacked. We get get hijacked. We we lose our presence. We were so disconnect with ourselves. We start to search a lot of things. sometimes we miss the obvious one which is next to us 
Yeah. Yeah. So, um, playfulness is an amazing factor, right? You know, like where it can really help us to really think, broaden ourselves of the problem. Ah, uh, think sometimes very lightly about the problem. Also, something is really good. So we start exploring the options. So we have the creativity part comes. This is my take on that playfulness. What is your take on the playfulness? I like your um, explanation and and your your take on it rather. I think for me, I don't know. I think the playful element for me is more about uh, the the joy of being curious. So going mm. back to my example of going home exactly the same way, just to disrupt my thinking and to try and um flex my brain mm. i've started so i live in london i go home on the underground i've started either getting off at a station earlier mm. Mm. i have to walk home and i don't know the way necessarily or i walk from the train station a different way and it is joyful that because i am seeing mm. completely new areas, new areas. of london Mm-hmm. um and i'm actually quite a curious person but it's really interesting so there is a joy of of in that playfulness mm-hmm. so i think mm-hmm. for me a lot of the playfulness being playful is about the joy the inner joy that it gives you mm-hmm. um whether it's appreciation of beauty or things that you've discovered or people that you've discovered connections I guess it's the 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 curiosity yeah. and the possibilities for me. Mm. Yeah. I think the connection part also really vital, right? Um yes. how do you really connect can really have oh I'm having a problem like this. What do you think about it and you are giving a perspective for me can really turn yes. the other way around for me. I think that's where the whole collaboration connection the whole piece comes with the communication piece. So thank you very much Anat for shedding those aspect in terms of unlocking solution now let's get ready for the final round of rapid fire <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> yeah great so this, so this is this is you being playful now right <laughs> absolutely absolutely so <laughs> so here what we're going to do um i'm going to ask let's a little couple of questions it's generally about four questions and let's explore how you respond to unlock solutions for us for today. Oh, okay. Let's All right. right. Your first okay. question is what one thing comes to your mind in terms of fostering culture to unlock solution in the workplace? Um I just think it's a love of learning seriously. I do. I think it's it's um when i think about it from my perspective it's just learning new ways of doing things uh learning about new kinds of problems new kind of conundrums i think it just opens up for me uh, a lot of um mm. new things so i think it's a, yeah it's it's a love it's having that love of learning to fantastic to, to see what the problem is but also see what the solution is thank you love of learning is something we need to foster in the culture for our next solution your question number 2 what role does adaptability play in navigation complex challenges and how can yeah we'll still, how can we do that yeah, adaptability well, the adaptability i think is is great because i think we can be i certainly i can speak from my experience i mm. i have some ways of doing things and i just get stuck i think adaptability is about inconveniencing yourself just doing something that actually probably upsets your brain because mm. your brain wants to go one way and and it's not as easy so yes that adaptability comes with a little bit of discomfort but i mm. think once you start doing it i think you'll be surprised that you know it's like a muscle you'll be surprised at what yeah. else uh, opens up so i think definitely yeah I think I'm then... working on it myself it's not easy I'm working on myself <laughs> <laughs> All right this could be a bit tricky question right Share okay. one can one... issue one successful example for me Yeah um a situation which you really unlock solution during a disruptive situation It can be personal as well if you want Unlocking a solution for something personally well it can be like a a personal a personal uh, problem i guess a personal challenge mm-hmm. um 
I don't know. I'm just thinking for some reason, I am just thinking of swimming and I really, really wanted to go swimming during the pandemic. And I, you couldn't, everything was shut. The only yeah. place that was available was the open air okay. pool next to us. And I started going there in the summer. And then the situation obviously continued. We were hitting winter and the temperatures were below zero. Oh. And I'm like, how do I continue? And I never dreamt that I would become a cold water swimmer, but I just kept going. I kept asking the more experienced people for their okay. advice. What do you okay. recommend? What should I get? Right. Uh, and, and so that was, I guess, one example of asking people who with more experience, yeah. but also yeah. saying to myself, you enjoy mm. the swimming. This is mm. the price you have to. I think, I think you're nailing your first answer as well, creating that learning <laughs> environment. <laughs> Right. Your last question for the day, right? How okay. can a leader balance the need for a structured process with the flexibility to create innovation in the workplace? A structured process with the flexibility for innovation. Yeah, I I think that for me, the best solution I can say is to open your mind to uh, innovation. So so just disruption is, is what I want to say, not innovation, because that by, by its nature, I would just say, open your mind a little bit to disruption mm. and just do something completely different. And I think yeah. that will, that will let in the, the, the light <laughs> because it's, 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 it's something that's got to come either organically yeah. or you, come and, and talk to people like me and you as him <laughs> and we'll show them how to do it all right um, but i think be open to solutions that defy logic and let Fantastic. them disrupt what you normally do that will be my, Super. my yeah. all right so that's the end of the rapid round fire and at the same time that's the time what we have ladies and gentlemen my key takeaway is that the element of learning um, which anna just shared on the uh, rapid fire round the learning ability to learn from whatever it's around you, I think it can really unlock our solutions. I think the obvious one as well. So I hope our listeners and viewers got plenty of key takeaways. Of course, you can get connected to Anna Chabi uh, through our LinkedIn. She do some she fantastic content. Um, of course, uh, she's very much helpful. Just drop a note. She'll get back to you. And of course, um, Anna, thank you very much. For this lovely oh. conversation we had and it was a pleasure um having you on the show and uh, looking forward to see more some fantastic play on your social media platform thank you so much azim it's been an honor and a pleasure to be uh on your podcast and you've challenged me with the rapid fire as well so it's good to be put <laughs> on the spot for a change that's All one right. way to remain agile put yourself on the spot <laughs> absolutely so thank you very much Alan. have a great day thank you thank you so much Thank you for joining yet another successful episode of EI Cafe with Azim. We appreciate your time and invite you to subscribe to the show so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Write a review and even rate it if you please. You can also follow Azim Sahir on social media. We would also love to hear from you on what topics you'd like us to cover and even who you'd like us to invite to the show. We wish you well until we meet again on another episode of EI Cafe with Azim.